Hello and welcome to Value Chain TV News Update. I am Adalvi Ogojofo with the news. And on the news update, the organized labor and the federal government are at loggerheads over the government's failure to sustain the payment of the 35,000 Naira wage award to workers. Workers in the federal civil service, while speaking to journalists, noted that the federal government only paid the wage award for September. Head of Information at the Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC, Benson Opa, expressed disappointments in the government's actions, describing them as dishonorable and un unacceptable. He indicated that the NLC would take appropriate actions which would be determined by the Congress's organs and that the communication with the government would precede any action. Following the removal of fuel subsidy by President Bola Tinubu on his assumption of office, the federal government agreed to pay the increased wage to each of its workers in order to reduce the hardship caused by the subsidy removal. Car scarcity has hit Nigeria's capital city, Abuja, resulting in long queues at several bank branches, with point of sale POS operators doubling their charges as observed by Value Chain TV. The car shortage may not be unrelated with the festive period and logistical challenges in currency distribution. Meanwhile, the Central Bank of Nigeria has issued a new directive to all banks, other financial institutions and non-bank financial institutions to with immediate effect suspend the processing charges previously imposed on large cash deposits. This change was disclosed by the CBN in a memo where it expressed that the change affects deposits over 500,000 Naira for individual accounts and 3 million Naira for corporate accounts. Previously, those deposits attracted processing fees of 2% and 3% respectively. The federal government has signed a crucial agreement to establish a 1 gigawatt solar photovoltaics manufacturing plant within Nigeria's borders. The agreement represents a collaborative effort between Infrastructure Corporation, Infracorp, led by Dr. Lazarus and Bazo, Solarge BV of the Netherlands and the African Green Infrastructure Investment Bank. SA Ufoma completes the report. The Memorandum of Understanding, which was reached during the COP28 summit, signifies a major step towards a sustainable and self-reliant future for Nigeria. The partnership promises to unlock the potential of various economic sectors, including agriculture, healthcare and education by providing reliable and clean energy. Minister of Power, Mr. Adebayo Adelabu, while recognizing the critical role of adequate energy supply, noted the government's commitment to fulfilling its promises and addressing the current challenges affecting the power sector. He emphasized the crucial need for renewable energy sources to overcome limitations in transmission, distribution and generation capacity, ultimately improving the lives of Nigerians and fostering economic growth. Likewise, Coordinating Minister for the Economy, Olawale Edum, stressed the massive market potential for solar energy in Nigeria and West Africa, pointing out the paradoxical situation of abundant sunshine alongside limited energy assets. For Value Chain TV, S.A. Ufoma reporting. You're still watching news updates on Value Chain TV. We'll be back after the short break. Stay with us. Dear colleagues and industry partners, on behalf of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I would like to invite you all to join us for the seventh edition of the Nigeria International Energy Summit 2024. Nigeria's premier and official oil and gas meeting due to take place in Abuja from February 26 to March 1, 2024. NIES remains the only official industry trade event of the federal government with the approval of the Federal Executive Council. Being the first edition to be held under the current administration, the importance of NIES 2024 becomes even the more significant. The theme of the summit for this year's event is navigating the new energy world order, security, transition and finance. It aims to match Africa's attractiveness to the right investment partnership while ensuring greater participation and engagement of indigenous businesses in the sector. Within the challenges of climate change and energy transition, 
lie opportunities for a future where Nigeria's hydrocarbon resources play a central role in pouring our nation, the African region, and the world at large, while at the same time safeguarding our environment. His Excellency Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu, DCFR, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, will be the special guest of honor. As tradition, NIAS 2024 will feature the highest level of attendance by top decision makers, industry leaders, and all stakeholders from both the public and private sectors from across Africa and the global energy community. We'll be there to personally welcome you to the seventh edition of the Nigeria International Energy Summit 2024. Further details on the event will be obtained from its website. Thank you and welcome to the Nigeria International Energy Summit 2024. Welcome back. Moving on, Minister of Power Adebayo Adelabu has disclosed that the Zungeru hydropower project is 99.8% complete and to start operation before the year ends. Adelabu revealed this while speaking during a session with a joint committee of the Senate and House of Representatives Committee on Power, chaired by Senator Einaya Agbaribe. He also justified why Mambila Power Project did not get any allocation in the ministry's 2024 budget proposal, noting legal disputes had continued to rock the Mambila Project, which is the reason for the zero allocation to the project. Chief Adelabo added that the omission was deliberate and not a mistake because the project is under international arbitration and until it is resolved, nothing can be done about it. Value Chain had earlier reported that the Senate Committee on Power planned to interrogate the minister regarding why there is no allocation for the Mambila Power Project in the 2024 budget, even as the ministry intends to spend 400 million naira on conferences. The leadership of the Nigerian Port Authority, NPA, has commenced moves to penalize truck drivers involved in malpractice in the call-up system in a bid to sanitize the electronic call-up system, which has suffered controversy. This was disclosed in a memo signed by the Apapa Port Manager, Mr. Charles Okaga, stating that a total of nine trucks were identified to have been in the resale of the tickets and the management of the Truck Transit Parks Limited, CTP, would disable the trucks found guilty in the system. The Corporate Affairs Commission is set to delete 91,843 companies for failing to file their annual returns with it. In a list published on its website, the Commission listed 91,843 companies for delisting 2,738 less than the 94,581 it initially published in August. This is still less than the initial 100,000 companies that CAC said it would remove in an earlier announcement. In July, the Registrar General and Chief Executive Officer CAC, Garba Abubakar, revealed that the Commission would delete 100,000 registered companies from its database for failing to file an annual return. And that's it on the news update. I am Adalbio Gwejofo. Thanks for staying with us.